Uh, praise the Lord. We are glad you're able to join us this Wednesday. We believe that the Lord has kept you well throughout the week. We just want to encourage you with a word of scripture today as we continue in this journey of salvation. And uh, I would like us to begin with a word of prayer as we begin this service. Let us believe as we pray. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you for you have kept us, mighty Father. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy, dear Lord, that since the beginning of the week you have been with us, mighty Lord. We thank you because you have covered us and protected us, King of all glory. We pray, King of all kings, that even as we go to listen to your word to encourage us, mighty Lord, and to give us strength, King of all glory, that by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit you may speak unto us, King of all kings, that the meditation of our hearts, King of all glory, may be acceptable unto you. We pray that as we begin this service, dear Father, that King of all kings, your spirit may have eminence in us. We pray this believing and trusting in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I would like to welcome the praise and worship team to take us through a moment of uh, praise and worship. Praise God. Amen. The time that God has given us, let's just clap our hands and give him praise.
Amen. Thank you very much, praise and worship. This is uh, ACK St. Mary's Parish Kabete, and we just have the privilege of fellowshipping with you and sharing the word of the Lord with you. We understand that the Lord has kept us all well from the beginning of the week, from Monday. Today is Wednesday, and we just want to encourage you with the word to liven up our spirits and stir up the giftings that the Lord has put inside of us. So I would like to share with you briefly from the book of Psalms 69. This is a Psalm of David, Psalm 69, beginning to read from 1 all the way to 9. Psalm 69, beginning to read from 1 all the way to 9. And this is what the Bible says. I'm reading from the New International Version. That is NIV. This is what the Bible says. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in the miry depths where there is no foothold. I have come into the deep waters. The floods engulf me. I am worn out calling for help. My throat is parched. My eyes fail looking for my God. Those who hate me without reason outnumber the hairs of my head. Many are my enemies without cause. Those who seek to destroy me, I am forced to restore what I did not steal. You, God, know my folly. My guilt is not hidden from you. Lord, the Lord Almighty, may those who hope in you not be disgraced because of me. God of Israel, May those who seek you not be put to shame because of me. For I endure scorn for your sake, and shame covers my face. I am a foreigner to my own family, a stranger to my own mother's children. For zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who insult you fall on me. Let us believe as we pray. Lord, we just want to glorify you for this word that you've spoken unto us. We pray, dear Lord, that... As you go to share on it, as you go to listen unto you, the Lord, would you speak to our hearts? Would you comfort those who are going through different challenges and struggles, mighty Lord? Would you ignite the fire in those, King of all glory, who feel that they are tired and worn out, dear Lord? We pray, King of all glory, that would you reignite the zeal that we have towards you and towards your word? We pray this believing and trusting in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So I would like to share with you on this psalm, and like I've said, this is a psalm of David. And David was writing to the Lord, and he was lamenting about the things that he was undergoing, the troubles that had covered him, the persecution that surrounded him. And he says that people hate him and people persecute him because they know that he is passionate for the Lord, because they understand that he is seeking his Lord diligently. And this is the main reason why people are persecuting him. So today I want to talk to you about being zealous for the Lord, having zeal for those things that are called by God. One of the things that we understand as Christians is that we are faced and surrounded by different challenges. The book of Hebrews notes that there are those who have gone before us, from the book of Hebrews 11, talks about those who have gone before us, men who are mighty in faith, yet they themselves had to suffer a lot of things, and they kept the faith, and so they stand as a crowd of witness who are surrounding us because they have endured this fight. They have kept the zeal for the Lord. They have kept the passion for God despite the persecutions and the challenges that they have faced. So when you talk about being zealous for the Lord, one of the things that we need to understand is that being zealous for the Lord means being passionate about his word. It means that we take the word of God as the ultimate truth and seek to defend it and to do as it desires us to do. One of the most notable scriptures that speaks about this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 20, 8 and 9. Jeremiah, chapter 20, 8 and 9. 
The prophet of the Lord says this, that every time he opens his mouth, he only speaks violence and destruction. This is what he says, Jeremiah 20, beginning from 8, it says this, that whenever I speak, I cry out proclaiming violence and destruction. So the word of the Lord has brought me insult and reproach all day. But if I say I will not mention his word or speak anymore in his name, his word is in my heart like a fire. A fire shut up in my bones. I am wary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. Being zealous for the Lord means being passionate about his word and his judgment and his decrees. That just as his word says, we cannot be able to twist this word. We hold it as the ultimate truth. Jeremiah says that every time he opens his mouth, there is no good thing that comes out of his mouth. His words are those that are full of destruction and violence. Yet he cannot hold it within him. He says it is like a fire in his bones. He cannot keep it in. Being zealous for the Lord means proclaiming his word and his word of truth as it is, whether it is favoring us or not, whether we feel judged by the word of the Lord or not. Being zealous for God means keeping and upholding his word. The Bible says that forever, O Lord, your word is settled up in the heavens and you have glorified your word above your name, which means that the Lord will not violate his word because it will force him to violate his name. So being zealous for the Lord means being truthful, whether the word is painful to us, whether the word admonishes us or not. The second thing is this, that when we are zealous for the Lord, it means being eager to embrace, to pursue, and to defend the faith that we have. The Bible talks about those people who have gone before us, mighty men, who they did not shy away from facing persecution, from being killed and being judged by other people simply because they understood the truth of the word of God. They sought to defend it with their lives. They held the word of the Lord in the highest regard they could. Even if it meant that people were not going to be for them, that men were going to stand against them and ridicule them, they still stood for the word of the Lord. So it means seeking to embrace, to pursue and defend your faith. Are you proud and confident of the faith that you have? Are you confident of the salvation that the Lord has given unto you? Do you hold the sacrifice that Christ gave on the cross in high regard? If this is the ultimate truth that we have, then we have to give everything we have in order to defend whatever it is that we believe in. Do not shy away from people rejecting you because of the word of the Lord. David cries out and he says that people, they shame me and they scorn me because I've hidden your word in my heart. Because they know that I am zealous for your word. In fact, he says in 69 and 8 that I am a foreigner to my own family, a stranger to my mother's children because he has upheld the word of the Lord. Are we able to stand and defend the faith that we have inside of us? Are we able to stand and give up every other thing in order for us to uphold this word? Being zealous for the Lord, the third thing, means that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. Christ says, what does it profit any man? if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul. When we are passionate for the Lord, then we are willing to give up every other thing for the love of God. It means to put God always in the first place and every other thing to come after that. The Bible says this, that seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing shall be added unto you. Being zealous for the Lord means that we uphold the love that we have for God. It means that we seek to do that which he compels us to do. We seek to fulfill his laws and to uphold his statutes. 
Being zealous for the Lord means to ignore some of the things and the desires that we have in order for us to seek fellowship to be with him. This is notable in the book of Matthew 22 and 37 and the book of Deuteronomy 6 and 5. The Bible compels us to love God. He is the fulfillment of love. So if we are really zealous for the Lord, then we are willing to put every other thing as a second option and God takes constantly his first place in us. The third thing about being zealous for God is that to be zealous for God means to recognize the cost of following Christ and fully committing to him. Christ lost his life. He gave up his life that we will be reconciled back to the Father. And so he calls unto us to pay a price for the salvation that we carry. Being zealous for God, it means to recognize that there is a price that you have to pay as a Christian. There is a price you have to pay to defend your faith. We have to uphold the value of what Christ did for us on the cross. So being zealous for him is to understand that we are called to give up so many desires and passions of this world in order for us to seek and to be with him. The third thing about being zealous about God is to understand that our passion will not always be popular and accepted by other people. Christ faced rejection in his own home country. He faced rejection from his own people, those people he grew up with. Yet because of the calling that he had in him, the burden that he had to fulfill the will of God, he chose to still pursue the statutes and uphold the purpose to which God assigned unto him. So being zealous for God means to understand that our opinion will not always be popular amongst men. That there are people who will shun us away because we have chosen to believe in God. When the world is seeking to do that which is right in its own eyes, then your zeal for God is going to make you to stand out and not be integrated into the belief system of this world. The Bible says this, that we should constantly be transformed by the renewal of our minds. We should not be equally yoked by unbelievers. We should leave the practices of the world and seek after the kingdom of God. So when we are zealous about God and of those things that concern God, it means that we are willing to pay the price for us to be able to stand apart from those things that are called by the world. The book of Romans chapter 10, from verse 1 to 4, I would like to read this with you. Romans chapter 10, from 1 and 4. This is what Paul says. Brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. For I can testify about them that they are zealous for God. But their zeal is not based on knowledge. Since they did not know the righteousness of God and sought to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. Christ is the culmination of the law so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. This is an important point that Paul is bringing about to the Christians in Rome. He's telling them that I know and I can testify about the zeal that Israel has concerning God. But there is a problem with this zeal, that this zeal is not based on the knowledge of God. This means that we can be zealous about God and be so wrong about it. Paul himself persecuted Christians. This showed his zeal towards God according to the law, based on the law. He persecuted Christians and the early church. But because he was so passionate about the things of God and not based on knowledge, he did it wrongly. He persecuted those who stood for the truth and those who defended the faith. 
We can be able to see this zeal in Paul when he is converted and he seeks forth to become a preacher to the Gentiles. He does it with every bit of his strength. In fact, he confesses and says that whatever suffering that was left in the body of Christ, I have completed them in my own body. His zeal for the word of God made it possible for him to endure the sufferings that he had to go through in order for him to be able to stand for the faith. So being zealous for God also has to be based on the truth and on the knowledge of the word of the Lord. If you do not know the word of God, then you do not know his mind. In order for us to know the mind of God, we have to sit down, read, and meditate upon his word. We need to seek fellowship with the Lord to understand what his will and purposes for us are, to understand his mindset and what his calling for us is. This is the only way that we can be zealous for the Lord according to knowledge. The Bible says this, the book of Romans 10, it talks about those people who sought to be right with the Lord based on their own deeds. In fact, Paul says that they sought to establish their own righteousness and they did not submit to God's righteousness. Being zealous for God means that we take our time to sit down and learn from him, to meditate upon his word. The psalmist says that it is the desire of his heart to dwell in the house of the Lord every single day. He says that he meditates upon the statutes of the Lord because he seeks to know him. He seeks to have an intimacy with God. We have to be passionate and seek intimacy with God if our zeal for him has to be based on knowledge. So it is my encouragement to you today, brothers and sisters, that even as we seek to be zealous for God, as we seek to be able to know him and understand him, to be able to serve him, to understand that it is not our strength and our knowledge that is going to make us to serve the Lord the way he desires us to serve him. We have to fully submit unto him and to fully submit to the spirit of the Lord, to be led by him and to be directed of him. This is the only way that our zeal for him can be based on knowledge. So whatever it is that you seek to do, is it in line with what the scriptures say? As you seek to pursue those things that are called of God, do you know him? Do you understand what he is about? Do you understand his purposes for your life? Is your zeal based on knowledge? Do you know the price that Christ has paid for you? Do you know what he mandates for you as a Christian and as a believer? Once we are able to understand these questions and answer them objectively, then we can be able to place our zeal whether it is in accordance with knowledge or whether it is in accordance with our own wisdom. So my desire for you this Wednesday is that even as you seek to do those things that the Lord has called you to do, that you seek to have a personal relationship and fellowship with him, that you seek to know him first so that your zeal may be based on the knowledge of who he is, that the strength and the commitment that you show in serving the Lord, they may not avail to something that is of no value. Christ says this, and this is a painful scripture. He says that at the end of the days, there are some who will come unto me and say, Lord, Lord, I served you in this and this way. I called people unto your kingdom. And he will say unto them, go away for I know you not. I think this is the most painful thing for those who are serving God and those who are committing themselves to serve him but have no knowledge of who he is have no knowledge of his word and what the Lord desires of them. It is my prayer this morning that even as you put your strength forth to serve the Lord, that as you put your strength forth to commit yourself to God, that the first thing and foundational truth that you have is the knowledge of who he is, that you have given your life to Christ Jesus and you are not just serving him out of ignorance. If you have not accepted Christ, there is never the right time for you to embrace and accept salvation into your life. I would like to pray with you 
that you may be able to submit yourself unto the Lord, that the zeal that you have for him may be also be based on the knowledge that you may start to walk in accordance with the scriptures and understand that it is not your efforts that are going to make you right with the Lord, but that it is the gifting and the sacrifice that he offered for us on the cross that is going to make you well. Let us believe as we pray. I would like you to just repeat these words after me. Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that indeed you are Lord in my life, that you died on the cross, that I may be forgiven of my sins. I pray this morning, the Lord, you may forgive me of my sin, that I am a sinner and I'm not worthy in your presence. I pray that you may accept me as your child and into your kingdom, that you may lead me by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that whatever it is that I do, that I may be directed by you. Cleanse me and accept me, King of all glory, that even as I begin this walk, I may begin it with you. I pray, dear Lord, that as I begin this walk of salvation, that, Father, you may be able to offer me guidance, that you may light my path with your word of truth, that, King of all kings, all the glory and honor may be given back unto you. If you've made this prayer, my brother and my sister, this is the beginning of your journey in salvation. That now your works and all your deeds are going to be aligned with the word of the Lord. It is my prayer that the spirit of the Lord is going to guide you and it is going to lead you in this work of salvation. Seek a church that speaks forth and preaches the word of the Lord. That it may be able to establish you in truth. That your zeal for the Lord may be based in accordance with knowledge. We would like to thank you very much for joining us in this service. We pray that this is going to be a blessing unto you that if you are a believer, that you are able to realign your zeal in accordance with the knowledge and the truth of the word. And if you've just said the prayer that we've prayed concerning salvation, that the Lord may be able to guide you to find a truth-based church that preaches the word of the Lord, that may be able to seek those who may be able to guide you in your walk in salvation, that the zeal and the passion that you have in serving God may be aligned in his purpose. We want to thank you very much. We pray that the remaining part of the week that the Lord may be able to guide you, that he may be able to walk with you in everything that you seek to do, that you may be blessed in whatever it is that you put your hand forth to do. May he protect that which concerns you. If you'd like to worship with us in matters of tithing, thanksgiving, and offerings, our pay bill is 991740. You can be able to indicate the nature of your giving, and we pray that the Lord is going to bless you so much. I would like to pray for any of us who may wish to worship with us in terms of offerings and tithes, that the Lord may be able to keep you and protect you. Lord, we thank you for those who generously give towards your service. We pray, dear Father, that King of all kings, you may be able to bless them, that you may open your doors in heavens, dear Lord, that you may shower them, King of all glory, with your abundance, mighty Lord, that they may be not be able to suffer need, King of all kings, that King of all glory, whatever it is that they do, their businesses, they are blessed and they are protected in Jesus' name, mighty Father. We pray for those who are in employment, King of all glory, that Father, you're granting them favor with their juniors, with their seniors, King of all glory, and their colleagues, King of all kings. We pray, dear Father, for their families that, Lord, they are protected from any ailments, dear Lord, from those way, ways of the evil on King of all kings and his plans of destruction, mighty Lord. We thank you, dear Father, and we pray, King of all glory, that your abundance may constantly be revealed in their lives. We pray this believing and trusting in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us. We pray that you're able to join us again uh, next week, the same time, and that the Lord is going to bless you and keep you. Thank you very much.